but um, before I, I introduce uh, the man who we're honoring here, I want to read a couple of uh, letters here. There's a, from a few friends uh, uh, that have uh, written in. They couldn't be here tonight, but they wrote. Uh, first, my, my, my good friend, Billy Crystal, writes, Carl, uh, you've always been an inspiration to me. The list of tall Jewish geniuses is a short one. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you're it. Congratulations to a real giant with love and respect, Billy Crystal. Yeah. From Carol Burnett, Darling Carl, congratulations on this well-deserved award. All my love, Carol. P.S. Maybe now's the time for me to fess up. I've been secretly mad for you for years. <laughs> so there you, you got the shot with Carol Burnett, Pop. You can still do it. Okay. Don Rickles, uh, dear Carl, congratulations on whatever award they're giving you. <laughs> You've done so much for my career, like directing me and enter laughing like some 700 years ago. Sorry I can't be with you, but I promised Sid Caesar's grandchildren I'd take them to Disneyland. <laughs> Carl, keep your chin up, and I hope and pray your son Rob doesn't ask you for money. <laughs> Oh, by the way, you were so-so in Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> My warmest, your true friend, Don. And here's, here's from my dad's best friend, Mel Brooks. Uh, Carl Reiner has always been a pain in the ass. He never believed me as the 2,000-year-old man and continually questioned my veracity. I never liked him, but always admired his almost obscene energy. I have no idea what this word is about, but I'm sure it's well-deserved. Mel Brooks. And finally, from Steve Martin. Uh, Dear Carl, uh, and Steve and, and my dad did four movies together, and, and they were very, very close, a great, great collaboration. Dear Carl, I'm so sorry I couldn't be there tonight but I'm next door having dinner. <laughs> Carl, when I heard you were going to receive this tribute, I was so happy, I almost smiled, but I suppressed it. I think you're a brilliant choice for this honor because honoring Martin Scorsese just gets old. <laughs> but seriously, my best comedies were made with you at the helm, and I always wondered when we were making the movie, what were you doing on a ship. You have to think, Helm, you know, it's a, that's a tough one. I, mean, I would have taken that one out if Steve were, Steve, I would have, I would have excised that, that one leg, because you were hot up until that point. I don't know if they're giving you a trophy tonight, but you certainly deserve it. It might be a plaque, which is fine. If it's a certificate, I would reject it and demand at least a plaque. However, a trophy is best. Because, well, that's why they call it a trophy. So congratulations, I love you, and I'm so happy that we had three beautiful children together. So that's from, from Steve Martin. And now, the man who kept my father in California, the man who starred in one of the seminal television shows, one of the greatest situation comedy shows ever done on television, to this day, still holds up, the star of the Dick Van Dyke Show, Dick Van Dyke. Thank you very much. Oh, oh thank you. That's, that's lovely. That's a tribute to this gentleman here. I, uh, you know, for work for these kind of affairs, and I probably never get to see Carl. But I, I like my always show up when he's being honored. I. Uh, you know, did you see what Clinton just made $50 million speaking at these engagements? I'm, you're going to see a lot more of me in, in the future. I think it's <laughs> Not bad for a start. <laughs> Carl and I, you know, we're both octogenarians now. And uh, just, you know, just a little bit around the bend now. We don't remember a lot. So we sit and reminisce about things that never happened. <laughs> But it's, it's fun and it, it works. We, we laugh a lot. You know, the only thing serious I like to say about this 
man who is my idol, not only as a creative talent, but as a human being. And I've tried very hard uh, to be like him. You, you know, being a Gentile from Illinois, I, I only can get so far. But back in those days, you know, Mary and I had to sleep in twin beds. We were not allowed to say the word pregnant on the air. There were so many restrictions in those days that I, I think Carl did a tremendous job of getting some strong messages across with humor, even then, about tolerance and about racism. In those days, when it was not a subject to be discussed, he did a beautiful job. And today, with the kind of latitude they have in television, I'd love to see what Carl Reiner could do now with that kind of freedom. Would it be something? I, uh, it was the best five years of my life, that's it. And I'm sure that uh, if, if Carl were here, he'd say the same thing. Nick Van Dyne. You want your money, you got the money you can take. All right, I'm going to you want And now, ladies and gentlemen, the man who spawned me, Carl Reiner. I didn't know what it was, but I'm so glad I came. For, no, I am not kidding. Because I came, I saw faces and reminisced with people I haven't seen in a long time. Michelle Lee, Steve Martin. Yes, no, no not you, not Steve Martin. You're Dick Van Dyke. Oh, shit. I told you. These things, these, these things happen. And by the way, when Rob wanted to be me, and he said, Carl, now I want to be Rob. I'm not kidding. He outstripped me as far as being a movie maker. He has made some of the greatest movies this country has ever seen, including the bucket list. This, but from a few good men, from the American president. I mean, this is Spinal Tap. And I said, this is the best thing that can happen to a parent, that their children do things that they dream, they dream they would be able to do. I dream that my kids would be good kids, but not only are they good, wonderful people, they are non-toxic, nourishing people who are so creative. All of our children sing on key, in rhythm, and it's the one thing I wanted to be when I was a kid. I wanted to be an opera singer. As a matter of fact, why can't I start right now? Robbie remembers, I used to sing La Donne Mobile to him to put him to sleep. La Donne Mobile. But, but I would rather sing Recitar mentre presso del delirio Non so quel che c'è di go, ne quel che faccio I don't go any further. <laughs> because from here on, I was gifted, I was gifted with a wonderful voice. When I was younger, I had a two and a half, three octave range. The only thing I didn't have was pitch and time. <laughs> and I could have been a and that's what I wanted to be. And I ended up doing this instead, which I think was a better deal for everybody. <laughs> anyway, I, I didn't know who the Backlot Film Festival people were. I, I, I now, you're my favorite people in the whole world. I thank you for this and I thank you for this wonderful evening.